for you. But what together we can do for the freedom of man. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your host, OC, and welcome back to another episode of The Confusion Record. We're going to bring you this episode really fast. I'm not going to do a long intro or anything. It should help you understand what's going on right now uh, with some of the technologies uh, that they're trying to unveil on it. They're trying to make it mandatory. This is no longer an optional thing um, in some places, and they're trying to do the same thing here in, in the United States. Please click like. Subscribe if you haven't already. Click the notification bell so you get notified whenever new, new episodes of things are coming out. And please share the information with everyone that you know. That's what will make a difference. We must speak up. It's important to understand what the 5G is doing and what they say it's doing. We're told on the IEEE beam forming document that this technology cooked your eyes like eggs in World 2. We live in a world now where everything has to be black and white. You're for us or you're against us. You're good or you're bad. You're black or you're white. 5G is a weapon. It's used by the military. They drive up in these technology when they want to scatter a cloud and they put out these frequencies in a much higher power than, than 5G will be initially with us, but the same frequency. And people scatter because they get the feeling their skin is on fire. Because the human body, including the skin, is an antenna. It interacts with frequencies and it receives and transmits information. At the cutting edge of understanding of DNA, scientists know that DNA is a receiver transmitter of information. And we are electromagnetic electrical organisms, transmitters and receivers of information. When our electromagnetic fields are in balance and harmony, we have health. We have psychological health and we have physical health. The reason that this technological a society is causing so much psychological and, and um, quote physical disease is because these frequencies technologically driven and live in this Wi-Fi world now and all the phone masks and all the rest of it these technologically generated frequencies are scrambling the balance of the human electrical electromagnetic electrical communication systems and if you scramble them you 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 create a state of disharmony, dis-ease, which plays through to physical and mental, emotional, psychological dis-ease. And there's another point to this. The brain processes information electrically. It communicates with the cellular structure electrically, and it operates within a certain band of frequency. If you can broadcast frequencies carrying information and perceptions within the frequency that, that the brain decodes information, the brain will decode those frequencies and will have those perceptions. You can externally, even without connection to AI, although that's the piece de la resistance, if you like, that's the kind of holy grail. But even before that, you can influence people's perceptions externally by broadcasting these frequencies that we interact with because we are antenna. Now, some decades ago, there was a guy who worked out the frequencies of different emotional states. This is long ago. I mean, it's very, very sophisticated now. So every thought, every emotional response is a frequency. It, it generates a frequency and it is of, of itself a frequency. Hate is a frequency and it's different to love. You know, when you are in a, in a room and there's lots of aggression and conflict and hatred, you feel it. What do people say? Oh God, you can cut the atmosphere with a knife in there. That is because the frequencies of hate and conflict have been so generated, they have changed the electromagnetic field of the room. Okay, so got, 5G is going to be weaponized against us, potentially. Yeah, but the point being that they worked out 
the frequencies of various emotions, including rage. And basically, they can play across a community these frequencies without anyone knowing. And it starts to have an effect. And it starts to build rage. It starts to build anger. And people might not realize why they're feeling it, but they start the feeling. And then what they do is they, they trigger that with an event Maybe, a, you know, some guy is attacked by the police or something, or somebody's a, arrested for something they didn't commit. And now the, there's the trigger. The blue touch paper has been lit of this manufactured frequency driven rage. And you have mass riots and what have you. And people do things that they wouldn't normally do. And you can make people depressed. You know, the, the American military, they've admitted this. They have technology that fires frequencies at the enemy that basically breaks the enemy's spirit so they give up and put their weapons down. This is the technology we're dealing with. Now you take that into account and then you think of 5G. First of all, 5G doesn't travel well because of the nature of its frequency. So um, instead of big towers, as we have now, broadcasting these frequencies long distances, it won't do that. And it doesn't go through um, solid objects, what we call solid objects, uh, very well either. So to overcome that, there are going to be boxes broadcasting 5G, this weapon, down every street, all over the world. You're talking phenomenal numbers of these boxes broadcasting, like on the lamp standard outside your children's bedroom and stuff, broadcasting this stuff. There's no way you'll be able to go where you won't be in a field of 5G. And another interesting thing, I don't know whether you've noticed this, but the story broke, first of all, in Sheffield, when the council started cutting down literally thousands and thousands and thousands of mature trees in urban streets. And there were big protests about it. You know, Sheffield claimed to be a green city, but all these mature trees were coming down, thousands of them. Now, the worst nightmare, I'm not saying cause and effect, but I'm saying think on it, the worst nightmare of 5G in a street is mature trees, because it can't get through them. They don't want urban trees for 5G, because it won't go through solid objects very well at all, and it doesn't travel far. So we're gonna have this explosion of 5G transmitters, and then there's gonna be like 20,000 satellites up there, beaming 5G at the Earth. First generation wireless, 1G, was voice. The second generation, 2G, allowed both talk and text. The third generation, 3G, the internet in a limited way. And today's technology, 4G, completed that digital migration. But if anyone tells you that they know the details of what 5G is going to become, run the other way. The more I know, the more I realize how little I actually know. I have to tell people, 5G is a killer. I'm Mark Steele, anybody who hasn't heard me. I'm a weapon systems head up display expert, one of the leading experts in the world. I've actually brought cover in relation to this. And the reason I became an expert was to invent them. What I'm going to say to you today, do not believe a single word I say. Not one. I want you to do your research. You'll find it absolutely terrifying. Pay attention to what is really going on. Pay attention to the Internet of Things, what it is, what it's doing, where it's going. Pay attention to the automation. Pay attention to the 5G towers that are still going up everywhere. Wireless radiation has biological effects, period. And these effects are seen in all life forms, plants, animals, insects, microbes. In humans, we have clear evidence of cancer now. There is no question. It's very important that people always look at both sides and as positive as what the right hand is offering you, always to pay attention to what the left hand is doing. Just because a lot of people think something is right doesn't make it right. Just because a lot of people think something is good doesn't mean that it's good. It will be impossible to exist 
in a city or to walk outside without being exposed, there's going to be a cell tower in front of every few houses. And this means that your personal choices, whether or not you personally use a cell phone or hold it 10 inches away from your head, that cannot escape you from your radiation exposure. This is not a random series of events that have brought us to this point. Even when you look at technology, civilization, industry, the rise of technology, None of this has been random. None of it has been simply a matter of course, simply men inventing things and connecting the dots and moving to the next practical thing. All of it has been done by design to lead us to a certain point. Not a lot of people can really see what is actually coming. It's about to become a very, very different world, folks. This is a very, very disruptive technology. Very disruptive in as much as it's going to disrupt the way we live our normal lives. If we allow it to be rolled out and if we abide by the parameters that the government's putting in place with this technology. You know, and by around 2030, well, it's all going to be complete. Everyone's going to be in a complete lockdown. And the kids, as I've said so many times, the kids that are growing up through the system now will have no reference point for what the world once was. They'll have no reference point for what freedom even possibly looked like. They simply won't have the concept of it because it won't be anything they've ever experienced. And with 5G, I mean, what people need to understand with it is that it's all military grade technology. It's not just about monitoring. It's not just about social crediting. It's not just about surveillance. It's also about crowd control. It's about mood control. It's about emotional control. There are so many patents, so many US patents, so many the DARPA patents that show the incredible amount of psychological manipulation you can do through electromagnetic radio waves. And not just psychological control, but also physical control. I mean, it's control at all levels you can think of, folks. It's right across the spectrum. We've seen experiments with MIT where they've injected nanotechnology into rats and they've been able to switch the genes of the rats on and off using radio waves to operate the nanotechnology. You think about what's in the chemical spraying that goes on in the sky, the nanotech in all the foods. I mean, we're being set up in a big way, ladies and gentlemen, and the manipulation that comes through this 5G system is profound. It's absolutely off the charts. It's way beyond what many people are considering. You have the capability of manipulating vast sections of population, targeted areas of population, or targeting people individually, targeting crops individually, biology individually. You think about the nanotech is in everything. So anything that the nanotech is in can be manipulated through this 5G system. And the nanotech is in everything. They spray the nanotech in the skies. They put nanotech in the food. Even with what we flush down through our drains in our own homes, gets passed on down through the water system. So you see this in the food chain and this then nanotech in the food that we're eating and nanotech in the stuff that we're washing down the drains. And of course it ends up in the river system, it ends up in the fish, ends up in the algae, ends up in everything. With all of the stuff that they're feeding us about fast communications and good downloads and good connection speeds and all of this sort of stuff, that's the secondary application of all of it, or even the third application of all of it because ultimately this is military grade technology and what it's about is control and ultimately it's a weapon system you know it's a surveillance system and a weapon system you can have people under surveillance and then you can weaponize it and target certain individuals for elimination or whatever heart attack cancers whatever you want to do to them you just got to look at it folks and think well how much can you trust your government can you really trust these people? We look what they've done to the world so far, and that's who is rolling this system out, apparently for our benefit. When you look at the internet, you look at what it's become, it's becoming something that we never wanted. I mean, we wanted the internet there so we could have access to information, we could have fast communication with each other, but now it's becoming a digital barrier between us and reality. It's becoming something that we must interface with in order to access the real world around us. And all of our information is being removed from us and put onto what they're calling cloud computing now. They're even saying that soon you won't be able to get hard drives for your machines. You won't need hard drives because everything will be on the cloud. And all that means is that it doesn't exist anymore. It's up there in cyberspace and you don't actually have access to it on your own computer. So you can't have access to your own things. You've got to keep them on the cloud, which means you can be locked out of all of your stuff at any time. That's what it's about. I mean, I know people that have uploaded their 
photos to video host programs and then suddenly they get locked out and they need to verify who they are in order to access their own stuff. I mean, this is ridiculous, folks. They do all this sort of stuff and they say it's for your security. We're locking you out of the system because you've changed location for the day and so we don't think you are who you are. So we need access to all your devices and your cell phones and everything we can get to try to track you and triangulate you and get everything we can on you before we're going to let you have access to your own things again. That's what they do and they call it security. It's not keeping you safe. It's keeping tabs on you and making sure they can lock you out at any opportunity. And they're just kind of showing you that they can do that and you're agreeing with it by going along with it. And when you've got kids that are growing up into this system and everything that they do is online, everything they know is online, all their bank accounts, their shopping, their friends, their Instagram, all their connections to everything, their electricity bill, it's all online. And even their car keys and their access to their house becomes a digital. Then any threat of being locked out of that is going to stand as a major obstacle to these people ever thinking for themselves in their lives. You know, you imagine what it would be like. You start to question the government's actions. You start to speak out about vaccines. You start to speak out about anything that means something to you. And suddenly you find yourself locked out of the system. Suddenly you can't access your stuff because none of your stuff is here in the real world anymore. It's all been moved into the virtual world because that's what we're doing. We're removing our access to everything around us by creating this digital interface between us and the real world. And any threat of being locked out of that interface is going to be a totally complete system of absolute control. That's how you get people, folks. You get them addicted to the tech and you make the tech essential in their lives. And then any threat of being locked out of that tech makes these people walk between the lines very comfortably. And these people will do anything the powers that believe they be tell them to do. We will finally complete the biometric entry exit visa tracking system, which we need desperately. For years, Congress has required biometric entry exit visa tracking systems. In my administration, we will ensure that this system is in place. And I will tell you, it will be on land, it will be on sea, it will be in air, we will have a proper tracking system. Okay, so if you forgot your ticket to a, a game, a soccer game in Argentina, it's not a problem because you can use the microchip that's been embedded under your skin. To one day accept what the Bible's book of Revelation calls the mark of the beast. This fall, Northside joined a handful of districts that use what's called radio frequency identification technology, or RFID for short. Northside is piloting the program at its Anson Jones Middle School and John Jay High School. How it works, students must wear badges on lanyards around their necks. Tags contain tiny batteries that emit radio waves. RFID scanners embedded in the ceiling then read the badges and identify a student's location. In Privacy Watch today, the world's largest biometric ID system that tracks more than a billion people and has been hacked several times. Earlier. Some experts suggest caution among the concerns ID theft, health, and whether the chips can be tracked by GPS. Most people don't really understand how this technology works, what data is collected, how it's stored, or who might be able to get access to it legally or illegally. I've just been chipped myself. Uh, it's not a painless process, but it doesn't last too long, not too difficult, minor surgical procedure. New microchip technology now makes it possible for the emergency room staff to find out about your medical history at the touch of a computer key. At some point, we're all going to have RFIDs. It might be even in our fingers, where they require it with everything on it. Instead of carrying credit cards or money, we will probably be implanted with chips. And now RFID microchips like this are being injected into humans. I'm sorry, sir, did you just say you, you would get one implanted in your arm? Absolutely, without a doubt. Our driver's license will be on the RFID chip, our credit card number, all our information will be on this one chip. 
The chip is encased in unbreakable glass and is about the size of a grain of rice. The procedure is done with anesthesia and is relatively pain-free. It felt pretty scary, but at the same time it feel, felt very modern, very 2015. The government has just approved the use of a computer chip that would be implanted under your skin. When complete, everyone will have a unique 12-digit identity number. If hospitals purchase this detection equipment, the system will most likely start to include more and more people in those communities who will want the chips. Wow. Interesting. Everybody could have one of those one day. Does Google now know everything I do and everywhere I go? Because let's face it, Here, we, we just... like you guys, but you're from Google. It may be true that 10 to 20 year olds don't want to wear a watch on their wrist, but you can be sure that they'll be far more interested in wearing an electronic tattoo if only to piss off their parents. Forget mobile phones, your children and grandchildren may well want an implant instead. You know, when we check out at the grocery store, we'll be swiping our own arm over the scanner. And that will be something we feel we can't live without. It would be such a disadvantage to not have the implant that it essentially becomes not optional. Let's imagine a little bit what the future might look like if I could take your stem cells and put them on a chip, or your stem cells and put them on a chip. It would be a personalized chip just for you. <laughs> turns over but it doesn't start. But the RFID reader antenna is here. So when I authenticate, the bike powers up. That's it. Imagine if some of these machines could be made so thin, light and portable, that they could be attached right to the surface of your skin and go wherever you go there's some very sophisticated device functionality sitting on my skin. Welcome to the future, specifically the checkpoint of the future. It is envisaged that the passenger will be able to flow through the security checkpoint without interruption. This is what IATA, which is the airline industry trade body, is hoping will become commonplace around the world. A sort of one-stop shop for security from the curb to the gate, as they say, with dignity. Can a microscopic tag be implanted in a person's body to track his every movement. There's actual discussion about that. You will rule on that. Mark my words before your tenure is over. Mark my words, huh? More like the mark of the beast. Even though it is called a tattoo, there is no need to pierce or puncture the skin. Instead, the device sticks on. So what we can do then is we can take this device, laminate it on the skin. It occurs to me I've got them in my dogs. Why wouldn't I have them in small children, too? There are also several products available to keep track of children. Many of them act as emergency cell phones and tracking devices, with some even able uh, to display on a map the places your child has visited. To think something so small can connect you to everything that matters. Because I'm in love with my kids' kids. Because my car lost control while driving. Because now, I'm looking out for both of us. Because I have diabetes, but it doesn't have me. Because I spend my life in the ER, trying to save yours. I feel like I'm reading out of the book of Revelation, possibly. So what concerns Absolutely. come to you arise from humans microchipping themselves? This is the mark of the beast. <laughs> This is, listen, no, no, let me, let me tell you something. I, I mean, I'm, I, I'm no biblical scholar here, but it's amazing the parallels made. Well, you've heard of them being implanted in dogs so they don't get lost, but now microchips implanted in humans could change the way we tackle everyday tasks. They could also put our privacy at risk. In a Stockholm business complex, employees gain access not with key cards, but with the wave of a hand. This is something that you can use just like a key badge. At a recent tech conference, Hannes Schoblad explained how a microchip implanted in his hand makes his life easier. It replaces all the keys and cards that used to clutter his pockets. I use this many times a day. For example, to unlock my smartphone, to open the door to my office. Schoblad calls himself a biohacker. We biohackers, we think that the human body is a good start 
but there is certainly room for improvement. The first step in that improvement is getting a microchip about the size of a grain of rice slipped under the skin. Suddenly, the touch of a hand is enough to tell the office printer this is an authorized user. The microchips are radio frequency identification tags, the same technology widely used in things like key cards. The chips have been implanted in animals for years to help identify lost pets. Now the technology is moving to humans, but each touch leaves a digital footprint, and that can compromise privacy. Even a dedicated biohacker has concerns. It's very easy to hack a chip implant, so my advice is don't put your life secrets on a chip implant. So many economists believe the future will be cash free. You're already seeing it from everywhere you go, whether it's your baseball game or to your local deli. Now, Sweden is getting there even faster than anyone else. And 4,000 Swedes, now get this, have microchips implanted in their hands. We're going cashless. We've been cashless. Where's this cash? Ever buy a house with cash or a car? We've got this. I, I don't even have, I got a couple of bucks. We've been cashless. But that's not the issue. One of these days, these kids, these, I think you call them millennials or something. They're gonna take these little tiny RFID, radio frequency identification chips, about the size of a grain of rice. And they're gonna be cool, Scotty. Oh, they're gonna be waiting in line overnight to get implanted. An office in Sweden is taking wearable technology to the next level by implanting microchips into their staff. Yes, that's right, the newly opened Epicenter office complex in Stockholm is offering workers the chance to be chipped under the skin of their hands. The radio frequency identification chip, which is about the size of a grain of rice, allows users to open doors, swap contact details and use the photocopier. People who work here can be chipped to gain entry to the building and various services. Uh, I've just been chipped myself. Uh, it's not a painless process, but it doesn't last too long, not too difficult. Minor surgical procedure, which basically involves uh, a little chip the size of, I suppose, of a grain of rice being inserted under your skin. Uh, and you can then go off and have it programmed and then do various things inside the building. And they're going to say, look at this. I can go to the drugstore. I can go to a cab. Isn't it great? How cool am I? Look, I've got this little embedded chip. And they'll say, they have medical records, and you're going to do that to grandma and grandpa in case, God forbid, they have some kind of dementia, they're walking off. I mean, after all, we have it in our dogs, right? It's like on star for human beings. But here's the catch. One of these days, God forbid, Scotty, you defy, they, they, they find you guilty of something, and you go before a court, and they say, we're going to sentence you to prison? No. We're going to turn your chip off, and you don't exist. Everything. In fact, people are going to notice that when you walk up, they're going to say, who is this? You're not registered. You say, it's me. What do you mean, who is this? No, you're not showing up on this. You don't exist. Tim Shank's dogs have implanted GPS chips in case they get lost. Now he has a chip of his own. This is an NFC chip, so it's similar to what, what phones have nowadays. The Minnesota software engineer had his finger cut open to put this tiny chip inside. There is the chip. Which emits low frequencies. He programmed the chip to open his smart lock at home. So that unlocks my door. And manipulate his smartphone. And it turned off my ringer. Chrissy Heishman from Dallas has one too. And it's just a little glass bead like the size of a grain of rice. She uses hers instead of a key card at work. The online company Dangerous Things sells the device and an injection kit for $57. Dangerous Things warns customers on its site. This device has not been tested or certified by any regulatory agency for implantation or use in the human body. Use of this device is strictly at your level. Not what America will do for you, but what together we can do for the freedom of man.